From the University of North Dakota, this is Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Hello and welcome to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy. Well, it was a long-awaited home opener for the Sioux Hockey team against WCHA rival Denver at the Ralph. With UND Hall of Famer Ed Belfour watching, the Sioux split with the Pioneers. And despite that loss on Saturday, there's no doubt there was some entertaining hockey. We've got a full lineup for you today. On the ice, he's no joker to the opposition, but off the ice, he's quite a character. He's Brad Malone, and he's the subject of our player profile. Also hidden away in the bowels of the Ralph, a lot of good things are happening for hockey players of all ages. Take a look at the Hockey Academy in our feature story. Stay with us, Coach Dave Haxtell is going to give us his take on the Denver series, but before we talk to the coach, we have a question for you. Last year, UND became only the second team in league history to go 3-0 at the WCHA Final Five. Who was the first? The answer and more when we come back. You're watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Baller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Stop out for the last University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home volleyball match of the season. The team hosts the New Jersey Institute of Technology November 6th, 4 p.m. at the Betty Inglestead Sioux Center. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! You've never seen fast. You've never held it in your hand and unleashed it with a fingertip. Never watched pixels whip by at one gigahertz and had your neurons struggle to keep up. You've never seen fast because you've never seen this. The Droid Incredible by HTC. It's nothing short of its name. Buy a Droid Incredible with Flash and get any phone free. Basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877 Before the break, we asked you who was the only other WCHA team before North Dakota last year to go 3-0 at the Final Five. The answer, this week's opponent, Minnesota Duluth, went 3-0 the previous year in St. Paul. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with head coach Dave Hackstall. This past weekend, a series with Denver and an unfortunate incident on Saturday night, an injury occurred to Jesse Martin of Denver, coach. Yeah, Tim, our thoughts and best wishes, wish, wishes are certainly with Jesse and his family at this point in time. Let's get to the highlights of uh, Friday night's 4-3 uh, victory over Denver. Uh, it was important for you to come home and get a victory to, to start things out, wasn't it? Well, it was, uh, especially being on the road for, uh, for the previous three weeks and uh, coming off a long road trip, getting back in front of our, uh, our fans and in the great confines of, uh, of REA. It was important for us to get off to a good start, and we did that. Uh, and it started with uh, Ed Belfour uh, dropping the first puck and uh, on the ice with uh, Gino Gasparini. Yeah, it doesn't get any better than having those two guys back at center ice, does it? You know, when the game got going, it was kind of a tale, it seemed to me, of uh, almost two games in, in three parts. <laughs> well, we, you know, we, we, had, uh, we had a lot of good play throughout the 60 minutes. Uh, we gave up a couple of quick goals that could have turned the momentum against us, but I thought we did a good job staying with it. We had a great second period. 
uh, in terms of puck possession, opportunities generated, and just kind of, we, you know, we just kept coming even after we gave up the 2-1 goal to go down, made a couple great plays, and, uh, and put ourselves ahead going into the third period. How important to get uh, Dylan Simpson his first goal, Mike Cicci his first goal of the season as well? Well, I think, you know, important on both counts. One for Dylan, you know, he didn't know he was going to play until about 2 o'clock that afternoon. Uh, so to get him settled down early in the game by, uh, by having some things go right for him was important. And just overall confidence-wise, uh, for Mike Cicci to get that first one and uh, get the goose egg out of the goal-scoring column for him I think is important. Saturday night uh, obviously was a different story with, uh, with Denver getting the win. You go from Peter Menino to Chevery and now Britton. Uh, these guys just came, seem to come up with goaltenders that give you guys fits. Well, Sam Britton played, he, he, you know, he played very well Saturday. He was a difference in the hockey game. We were a more consistent team on Saturday night. We didn't complete plays uh, like we did on Friday. We generated a ton of opportunities, uh, 24, 25 grade A scoring opportunities. In the third period, we had 13 or 14 grade A scoring opportunities, but you have to bear down. And uh, for us, to be able to get one in the first 30 minutes would have drastically changed the overall complexion and, and probably the outcome of that hockey game. Well, that's the odd thing I've told you, that I, th I thought you played better on Saturday night than you did Friday, and you argue, of course, you can't be playing better if you lose the game, but consistency, maybe that was the difference. Well, yeah, judging the performance on Saturday, if we do that night after night, we're going to win an awful lot of hockey games. It's a really, uh, it's a disappointing loss. Uh, it gives you know, a lot of credit to Sam Britton and, and to Denver. They did a good job. Uh, playing some good defensive hockey, closing out the game. We made a critical mistake in giving up the shorthanded goal at the start of the third period, and that obviously uh, really played into the game plan of, uh, of Denver, um, and we just couldn't dig ourselves out of that hole. Not much you could do about the first power play goal uh, by Denver. That was just uh, well executed. Well, it was very well executed on their part. Um, you know, when you break it down, we've got a couple guys that are circling uh, with, without having their sticks in good lanes. Uh, that's how you give up good-looking power play goal so there's there's learning points there for our hockey team as well. Coach talk about that a little bit I've always talked about uh, uh, other teams and, and your team as well keeping your stick on the ice in the defensive zone well, blocking it's, lanes. It's critical and it's not just the defensive zone it's neutral zone Tim uh, if you're skating around with a stick in the air that's one dead stick uh, you have to have five sticks in lanes and you have to make things difficult coming through the neutral zone as well as into the offensive zone or the defensive zone, excuse me, real critical taking away lanes and trying to dictate what you give to your opponent. That's a lot of, that's a little thing I think that even young players uh, have to realize that they have to do that. If you still have to teach them at the college level, you better get it installed early. Huh? Well, I'm pretty sure uh, there's still coaches that are trying to teach it at the, at the National Hockey League level, but it's one of those little things that you have to do and do very well that really isn't, uh, it's, it's not a focal point and it's not something that's noticed by a lot of people up in the stands. But when you have five sticks on the ice, guys doing good things uh, with, uh, with sticks in lanes, it makes it tougher for your opponent. Keep that in mind, kids. Coming up, plenty of action in the WCHA last weekend. We'll check the standings, break down a couple of plays from the Denver series, and the best hockey training facility might be right at Ralph Engelstead Arena. It's called the Hockey Academy. We'll get a look at what it's all about coming up next. Come cheer on the University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux women's hockey team as they play host to Ohio State November 6th and 7th at the Ralph Engelstead Arena. Both games are set to start at 2.07 p.m. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota. The play is under review. Hey, take a look at this. This online course is awesome. Yeah, I gotta see that again. With waterfall hunting, you're trying to get the birds to come to you. You're picking the field, setting up the decoys, hiding in blinds. You're making the calls, trying to get their attention to make them come to you to get within range. That's where the real challenge lies, is bringing them to you. A rewarding experience would be a customer coming in, telling you their success story that you were able to help them out with. I'm Dave Averly. I'm a waterfall expert at Shields. 
It's time to let loose and be a part of the team. Come to the Alaris Center for the final Fighting Sioux home football game of 2010 on November 6th versus UC Davis. Tailgate lots open at 8 a.m. with kickoff at noon. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! The insurance puzzle. Each piece is specific to you and your business. Each part fits in its own way with only one combination that works best. Every organization has its own individual insurance puzzle. The key is to find your very own solution. Voller Insurance can help. We've been tailoring insurance solutions since 1947, providing VIP service one business at a time. Let us help solve your insurance puzzle. Voller Insurance, Grand Forks, Fargo, Bismarck, Minneapolis, Sioux Falls. Rather than just watching professional hockey players, some kids have the opportunity to work with them. The Ralph Engelstead Arena has a new program allowing boys and girls to train with their hockey heroes. In the 1980s, the UND men's hockey team imported six foot, three inches, 205 pounds of pure Canadian power. Brad Berry played 112 games for the Fighting Sioux before taking off for the pros. Uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, probably the best years of my life. You know, I came here as an adolescent teenager and, uh, you know, grew into a man. A man who made a living for 20 years playing and coaching the game that brought him to Grand Forks. All the way, here we go. And that game eventually brought him back. I think Ralph's vision was to help obviously UND men's hockey program out, but then again to help youth hockey, and that was part of his mission. And uh, I think it just fell into place once we had to show what the idea was that we had here, and then uh, from there on it took off. The Hockey Academy at the Ralph Ingleset Arena was launched in May 2009. Brad found familiar help to start it. So I thought he'd be absolutely perfect, and he is, and he's such a hard worker and very good with the kids. I didn't quite know what to expect right away, but I knew it was something that Grand Forks didn't have, a specialized hockey training for people year-round. It's just something that was missing. Brad recruited and coached Eric when he played for UND, and now he recruited him for a second time. So I owe a lot to where, to where I got in hockey to him after, after college, and we, we developed a bond. The powerful pair trains the athletes in shooting, puck handling, and strength and conditioning exercises. Players from preschool all the way to college sharpen their skills. What they do here in North Dakota that they do, don't do at a lot of other college hockey programs is they do a lot more sports specific, little muscle training that, that really pays off when you actually get out on the ice. The academy also has special guest instructors, most of whom enjoy returning to their hockey roots. I love seeing the kids progress, that's probably the best part when you go from one day to the next, you know, it makes you want to come back for more and try to, try to help them along as much as you can. Brad and Eric may no longer get the glory on the ice, but they still reap the benefits of behind the scenes. And just seeing these kids develop, like we've had a, a bunch of kids come in here over the first year, and when you see these kids come in on a, on a regular basis, you really do see an improvement, not only, uh, not only uh, skill-wise, but maturity-wise, too. It's exceeded my expectations. That's it, Braden, not a boy coming from this side. These fighting Sioux athletes from the past are now impacting the players of the future. Get ready, get ready. Since this story was shot, both Brad Berry and Eric Fabian have moved on in their careers. Berry is now an assistant coach for the Columbus Blue Jackets in the NHL. Fabian is an assistant coach for the Fighting Sioux women's hockey team. Fighting Sioux alum Carl Gehring has taken over the role of director of the Hockey Academy. Next up, a look at the league standings and we'll break down a few plays from the weekend. So stay with us. We'll take a closer look with Coach Hackstall next when Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey continues. Basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877 91 
nation. Green is great for They don't call a grant for nothing. Tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! Stop out for the last University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home volleyball match of the season. The team hosts the New Jersey Institute of Technology November 6th, 4 p.m. at the Betty Inglestead Sioux Center. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! Dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. Watch the crowning of a new NCAA Men's Frozen Four champion April 7th and 9th on ESPN and ESPN2 in high definition. For information, visit NCAA.com slash Frozen Four. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Tim Hennessy with UND head coach Dave Haxtell. Got a look at the standings there and over the weekend, uh, I don't know if there was any huge surprises other than coach maybe the amount of goals Minnesota scored in Colorado Springs. Yeah, they, uh, they racked up a bunch out in Colorado Springs and, and got two good wins out there. So again, looking at the standings, obviously Duluth coming into town this week at the, at the top of the standings, uh, still undefeated. They, uh, they got a good overtime win in Bemidji this past weekend and uh, and uh, found the tie on Saturday night. So uh, standings are tight. Again, I'm still looking at the loss call. And uh, that uh, I said I was disappointed with the loss, not necessarily the performance on Saturday night for us, but that gives us our first that first notch in that uh, in that all important loss column right now in the WCHA standings. We'll talk a little bit more about Duluth a little later on, but let's uh, break down a couple of plays from this past weekend against Denver. Starting off, I do believe with a goal by uh, Corbin Knight. Just a just a great play. I mean, you know, talking about puck support uh, and uh, and working hard without the puck, creating two on ones as we enter the zone. Jason Gregoire with a great little chip play to Brett Hextall, and then another two on one play over to Corbin Knight who. Great poise. I mean, he pulls that puck and, uh, and pushes it underneath uh, Sam Britton right here as we see the replay. Uh, great goal, starting with a good play by our defenseman up the wall and uh, their three forwards uh, working real well together, working hard without the puck and finishing a play. Coach, that that pass by uh, Brad Hextall, it looks like a simple play there, but go out and the ice try to make that pass. Huh? All, all tough <laughs> plays, all very good plays. The second highlight, Tim, is just a face-off play where we do a good job off a lost face-off, everybody doing their job, everybody creating options on the, on the cycle up the wall, and then a good point shot with something that we've talked about, uh, talked about before. Good net front presence to score goals. We couldn't solve Sam Britton on Saturday night. You got to get people to the front of the net. You have to have track traffic. Uh, that was a great uh, snapshot from the point uh, that was tipped and a good positional save by Sam Britton who didn't see the puck. No, well, Corbin Knight makes the tip and that's about all you can do. And he did a lot of that on Friday. Jason Gregoire on Friday night. He was a monster. Well, and you know, the best thing that we could have done to finish off that play was to be available for the rebound. The initial shot didn't go on, on go in on the tip. Uh, but the rebound on the back door was right there. We just didn't get to it. Talk about uh, getting those two-on-ones you mentioned. We got two two-on-ones on this play. Well, everybody concentrates on the player with the puck. You know, it's, it's more so the guys without the puck coming up ice, working hard to get available for their teammate, getting themselves in lanes and uh, in positions to, uh, to receive a pass. Uh, not just a pass in traffic, that's, uh, that's a nothing play, but getting yourself into position where you can be effective on the rush. And you have to have numbers with as well as teams play defensively, you have to have numbers coming up ice and you have to work real hard in a short pass game coming up the ice against a good trap. Coaches harping on it all the time, play away from the puck, more important than play with the puck. Well it is, whether it's on offense or defense. All right, let's uh, move on here. He's the only Sioux player who's had his own radio show. When he's done playing hockey, probably be doing this show. Brad Malone is the subject of our player profile, but first a look back on our Fighting Sioux history. Nick Domenko came to North Dakota from the Chicago area and turned out to be one of the best offensive defensemen UND has ever had. But where is he now? We'll have the answer and more when we come back.
The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. I am North Dakota. Two basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877-91-SUE. As summer is left behind, fall brings new adventures. Make them better with a vehicle from Dahlstra Motors. Whatever adventures come your way, Dahlstrom can make the difference in making your life a smooth ride. The real thrill of hunting is the fall season. The thing I enjoy most is watching the dogs work and seeing their enthusiasm. It's a great experience to get a chance to watch the birds flush, get a good shot, getting a good retrieve, a good point, a dog that backs. It gives me a lot of satisfaction to see a nice shotgun go to somebody that truly appreciates the aesthetics of fine rifles or shotguns. I'm Jack Pruitt, and I'm a pheasant hunting expert at Shields. The answer to our where are they now question, Nick Nemenko was here for the Denver series, talked to him then. He's battling an injury right now, but plans on returning to play in Switzerland very soon. Every hockey team has what we call a character. Brad Malone is certainly one of them. He's not a bad player either. Welcome back. We're with senior forward Brad Malone of the Sioux hockey team. Pony, how'd you get Pony for a nickname? Uh, long story, started off with uh, my cousin had his own, uh, like kind of like a Brad Miller time thing at uh, St. Cloud and uh, and then I had hosted a radio show in juniors called the Maloney Pony Show. Imagine that, right? And then uh, kind the of the Maloney Pony Show. Yeah. What was it? Kid show? Yeah, I don't know. It was kind of a goof. It was kind of a joke, but anyway, it was. Uh, yeah, so I kind of just stuck with it, and then uh, Osh kind of started it all, I guess, and hasn't left. From New Brunswick, Canada. New Brunswick, yeah. It's where they make bowling balls, isn't it? Uh, honestly, I don't think so. No. I think it's Brunswick. Is it New Brunswick? I don't know. Well, if it's a new ball, it'd be New Brunswick, right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about New Brunswick. Uh, small province um, from Miramichi. It's a small town, 20,000. Uh, fishing town. Uh, love their sports. Uh, I don't know. Irish capital of Canada. Nice. There it is. Yeah. I can't see you though out on the docks with the rubber boots and the whole thing on the. No. Did you do any of that? No, no, no. It's, Why not? I, I was more around the water when it was frozen, I think, than. Uh, I'm not much of a swimmer. Start skating at two. First time I ever two? first time I ever skated was in Pittsburgh with the Stanley Cup. Wow. Yeah. Lucky. Hockey so. family, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit. Pressure on you to play? No, actually, my parents never really. They, I mean, they put it in front of me, but they never forced me to play. So. When did you know you were going to be any good at it? I didn't really know. I don't think. Uh, maybe like when I was like 13, I think maybe I kind of thought I could try and make a run of things and at 15 I left home so it was uh, I know leaving home at 15 I know it was kind of a serious thing so yeah how was that leaving home at 15 it was be tough huh yeah it was tough at the, especially coming home from a small town it's like you know you're so close with everybody and then kind of just pick up and leave but um, you kind of had to do it so it's one of those things where wait I can't let you get by with that one had to do it well I just thought if uh, you know I wanted to you know be in a situation where I am today, I think uh, it was just kind of necessary to get out and kind of explore. What else do you like to do? I know you like to sing. <laughs> sing, yeah. Um, I don't know, to be honest, I'm just pretty plain. You're not a golfer, fisherman, oh, or like hunter? Oh, I like fish, I don't know, but I mean, that's nothing. Are you good at any of them? I'm, I'm really good at things that we shouldn't talk about, like 
Ping pong, mm -hmm. decent at ping pong, pool. Could you beat Darts. Vandy? Belby? No, Vandy, Vandy, he's a gamer. Like, I don't think, but uh, could take Mardo and Darts. Fast four years for you, huh? Too quick. Uh, if I could go back and do it all over again, wouldn't change a thing, except for maybe my freshman year uh, on the ice. And uh, it's been a lifetime dream to do it and do it all over again. Brad, has been fun. Thanks for being with us, yeah. and uh, good luck. Thanks, man. Yeah, you might call him a beauty. Malone is one of the top face-off guys in the league as well. Also the first Sioux player from New Brunswick, Canada. Former Sioux All-American Scott Sandlin leads his Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs into town this weekend. Some thoughts about that with Coach Hackstall coming up. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Baller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. That is a great online course. Time to let loose and be a part of the team. Come to the Alaire Center for the final Fighting Sioux home football game of 2010 on November 6th versus UC Davis. Tailgate lots open at 8 a.m. with kickoff at noon. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Coach next, the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs are in town with a familiar coach, of course. Former All-American Scott Sandlin is their head coach. But this is a team that's unbeaten in the WCHA. They've given up only five goals in four games. Uh, does that mean they're good defensively? Does that mean they always have the puck? Well, I think that means <laughs> it's, a, it's a good combination. Scott's obviously done a great job with, with, his, uh, with his group of guys there. It's a veteran group. Uh, their, their defensive core is tough to play against. They move the puck very well, which tends to mean you're spending less time in your own zone. And then up front, you know, they, they uh, play a puck possession game. The, the line of uh, Connell and Connolly and Fontaine obviously draws a lot of attention. They have the puck a lot uh, and, and uh, are pretty darn good offensively. Uh, you know, you add to that the depth of their forwards. I think the overall combination that they have is, uh, is a pretty good one, a pretty tough one, and it'll be a great opponent this week. You know, a lot of times when you're looking at a team, especially in the power play, you don't specifically uh, go after one guy, but Fontaine is real dangerous on the power play. Well, they, they've got five good players on, on each of their power play units. So obviously, again, the first unit will draw the most attention. Fontaine is very, uh, very dangerous, but, you know, the two Connolly... Uh, uh, they're not brothers, but the two Connolly boys uh, really do a good job in terms of uh, uh, puck uh, possession, puck control. They've got such good, quick, strong sticks. Uh, you watch the puck movement on their power play. That's what makes them uh, so difficult to handle. Coach, what are you looking for out of your team this week? Well, we want to build on what we did uh, in terms of our, uh, our overall uh, play last weekend. I was, uh, was happy with the steps that we made from the previous weekend in Maine. Uh, but the bottom line is you have to win games at home. And the, uh, the loss on Saturday night to Denver was a disappointing one, but we want to build off of uh, the performance that we had and really take advantage of our home games against a good Duluth team. Good luck this weekend, Coach. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. And we want to thank you, too, for watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Next week, we'll review the Duluth series. We'll also visit with a player who made it back from a devastating injury is now an assistant captain with North Dakota. That and much more on our next show. On behalf of Coach Hackstall and the Sioux Hockey team, we thank all our fans for watching and we'll see you next week on Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey.